Hello, hello, scholars. It is Mrs. Safel. Um, if you are watching this, it is probably Monday, and that means we're starting our chapter book. The chapter is, or the chapter book is called "The Tiny Hero of Fernie Creek Library." And remember, today I'm reading two chapters, and then I'm going to read two more chapters um, on Wednesday. Okay, chapter one. I knew this would happen," said Ma. I told her and told her, stop reading. It's dangerous. Didn't I say that? Of course you did, said Pa. But you know what men's like. She does what she wants. Eddie crouched behind a piece of yellow chalk, listening. He'd been asking his parents about Aunt Men ever since last Tuesday when she didn't come home from the library. But his mother had brushed off his questions. Stop worrying, she kept saying. Your aunt can look after herself. But now, here it was, the truth. Ma was worried, too. What are we going to do? She asked, her voice rising to a squeak. There was a long pause. Eddie just steps away, ducked even lower behind the chalk. He knew his parents were trying to have a private conversation. With so many children in the family, the only way they could be alone was to leave their home behind the chalkboard and sit out on the ledge. They spoke in hushed tones, the way your parents might whisper on a balcony if they didn't want you to hear. There's only one way, said Pa slowly. I'll have to go look for her. You, said Ma, with your legs? You certainly will not. You never make it past the door. Eddie peered at the classroom door. From this distance, it was mostly a blur, but he knew it was a very long walk. And Ma was right. Pa's back legs were so creaky, he could barely crawl down to the floor. I have to, said Pa. Men may be hurt. She may be. Don't say it, said Ma. Oh, I could just spit. There was no need for any of this. She could have stayed home snug as a bug in a rug. Plenty of books right here in this classroom. But no, she had to go to the library. She had to risk her life, and now she's risking yours too all because of this foolish, unnatural habit. I asked you, what does a bug need with reading? Paul let out a sigh. Well, I don't understand it myself, but ever since we came here, don't you go defending her, said Ma. She's corrupted Eddie too. Every chance he gets creeping into some book, it's like he's trying to get killed. I tell you, it's a weakness in your family. This book reading, a terrible flaw. Look at what happened to your father. Now it was Eddie who let out a sigh. He'd heard this sad tale so often he could say it by heart. Grandpa George had suffered a tragic death on page 131, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, when some unthinking child had slammed the book shut. Poor Grandpa George, thought Eddie. He had died without ever knowing what happened to Dorothy. Ma, meanwhile, wasn't finished. It's out of the question, she told Pa. You can't go after men. It'll have to be me. Now wait, said Pa. That's not right. What about the babies? Ma didn't answer. What could she say? There were 27 grubs tucked away in the wall, depending on her care. Well then, she muttered. Who? There was a long pause. What about... Eddie, said Pa. Eddie couldn't help himself. He jumped, stumbling sideways. He fell against the chalk, which started to roll. He grabbed it before Ma could see, but she was far too upset to notice. Eddie, squawked Ma. Have you lost your mind, Eddie? I love our Eddie to bits, but we both know the truth. He's a dreamer, a fool, a nincompoop. He can hardly find his way off the chalkboard. No way, no chance, no how is my baby boy wandering off through this huge endless school to hunt for a crazy old bug who should have ne who should have known better. Hush, said Pa, then he sighed. You're right, of course. This is too tough for Eddie. Darn tootin', said Ma, and besides, he stands out. Bright color like that is just asking for trouble. You know he shouldn't be out in the open. They both went quiet, thinking. The problem was, and Eddie knew it, there was no one else to think of, just their own family. Oh, they had plenty of friends and relatives out in the big woods, but only Eddie and his closest family had had the bad luck to get scooped up one evening and dropped into a tank. 
or to a glass tank of dirt in room 19 on Fernie Creek Elementary School. For two weeks, they had been fourth grade science projects. And then came the fateful night when the cleaner knocked over the tank dirt or the tank dirt and all. He was only gone a few minutes to fetch a shovel, but while he was gone, the bugs saw their chance. And that was the other big story Eddie had heard his whole life, the great escape. How Grandma Ruth had bravely led the family away from the tank, across the huge classroom and up the wall. How she had managed, with her unearning sense of direction, to sniff out the crack behind the chalkboard that they now called home. But now, Grandma Ruth was gone. So was Grandpa George. There were only Eddie and his parents left, and his 53 younger brothers and sisters, and Aunt Min, of course. Was she all right? Was she alive? In his entire life, Eddie couldn't remember a single time that Aunt Min hadn't come home. Someone would have, have to go after her. Eddie stared at the big blurry door.